Welcome to Top 10 Beyond the Screen, I'm your host Johnny Rogers and in today's video we'll be breaking down some of the biggest interviews with actors that pretty much ruin their careers. Some of these celebs were able to make a comeback following their disastrous interviews, but others were rarely heard from again. But before we get into that, if you don't want to miss another daily video from us, make sure you tap that subscribe button to join our notification squad. Now with any further delay, let's get right into today's list of the Top 10 Interviews That Destroyed an Actor's Career. In at number 10, Megan Fox. If you want to keep your job, it's probably best not to compare your boss to Hitler. During a 2009 interview with Wonderland, actress Megan Fox did just this while describing her boss, the Transformers director Michael Bay. Not only did this result in her immediate firing from Transformers Dark Side of the Moon, it also led to the actress being blacklisted in Hollywood for the next few years until she apologized to Mr. Bay. Upon reflecting on her being kicked out of the Transformers franchise, Megan told Cosmopolitan Magazine that this was absolutely a low point in her career, but without saying what she said, she wouldn't have learned as quickly as she did. She knew that in order to get her career back, all she had to do was apologize, but she still refused. Fox blames her attitude on being very self-righteous at 23 and not being able to see that this was for the greater good. Probably the greater good of her bank account, I'm imagining. In at number 9, Katherine Heigl. Katherine Heigl seems to be the type of celebrity that just says yes to every opportunity, and then when she regrets it later, she just openly bashes her decisions in the public eye. The main example of this happening was when she co-starred opposite Seth Rogen for the Judd Apatow film called Knocked Up. When Seth Rogen was asked about this, he said that Katherine and him had a great time while working, but mainly because she was improvising a lot of her own stuff, which was overall great for the film. However, not too long after that, she did an interview with Vanity Fair and expressed just how much she hated the entire movie. Heigl said, It was a little sexist. It paints the women as shrews, as humorless and uptight, and it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. It exaggerated the characters, and I had a hard time with it on some days I'm playing such a b Why is she being such a killjoy? Why is this how you're portraying women? 98% of the time it was an amazing experience, but it was hard for me to love the movie. Well, Catherine, now it's hard for anyone to really trust you being in their movie, especially after an interview like that. She had some commentary about Knocked Up after it came out. What'd she say? She she didn't like it. She didn't like it? But she was so awesome in it, so it, it, we, it was right. confusing. In number eight, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is the exact polar opposite of what you should do when pursuing a career in Hollywood. He carries with him a terrible offset and onset reputation, and the debacle that he went through in 2011 even led to his contract termination from the show Two and a Half Men. For a while, he was all over the news for everything, substance abuse, domestic violence, and even when he revealed that he was HIV positive. With his history of flying off the drop of a hat and trying to get people fired who speak ill of him, Sheen has had a very difficult time rebuilding his career. Although it's hard to put a pin in just one interview in particular that really ended Sheen's career, there are certainly a bevy of bizarre ones to choose from. Perhaps the worst was when he was on the Today Show for a very candid conversation. People that aren't special, people that don't have tiger blood and, you know, Adonis DNA. Strong people have relapsed. Strong people have started using again. Fools. How do you avoid that? Fools. Trolls. In at number seven, Tom Cruise. During an interview in 2005 with former Today Show host Matt Lauer, Tom Cruise wanted to make it very clear to the host that he knew more about the history of psychiatry than Matt Lauer did. This interview came at the height of the publicity about Tom joining Scientology, which became the painfully awkward main subject for a majority of their discussion. The highlight of the interview, though, was when Tom Cruise was asked about his previous criticism of Brooke Shields and her use of antidepressants, for which the megastar actor responded by calling her a glib. Anytime that Matt wanted to argue how how antidepressants actually have helped people in the past, Tom would constantly dismiss him and just ask that they move on. Do you understand that? The difference is, no, this was no, not Matt, against Matt, her Matt, will, though. Matt, but this Matt, wasn't Matt, against your question. Will. Matt, I'm asking you a question. I understand Do, there's no. abuse of all of these things. No, you see, here's the problem. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. In at number six, Miles Teller. Miles has been involved in more projects following this disaster of an interview, but only because he made a public apology for what he did. For a while following this interview, though, his career seemed to be over. I mean, it really was that offensive to the interviewer that fans condemned the actor for his rude behavior. The young Whiplash actor had plenty of potential until he seemingly closed the door on all future roles with just a single interview. Throughout the 2015 Esquire interview, the actor compared his private parts to a glass, then asked the writer to cut his meat for him at the restaurant where the interview took place, and that he believes that he's better looking than the public thinks he is. Looking back, he admits to being a huge jerk, which is a bit of an understatement to say the least. In at number five, Jesse Eisenberg. Um, 
Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well, um, you were like the uh, Carrot Top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, and it's a good thing. It's I'm a good go thing. Cry because... now. No, don't cry now. Cry after the interview's over. While promoting the film Now You See Me, Jesse Eisenberg just could not contain his utter disdain for this interview. Right out of the gate, he was on the offensive. The interviewer refers to Morgan Freeman simply as Freeman, for which Jesse then takes real offense to. He then, as you saw, remarks that she's the carrot top of interviewing, which insults the interviewer so badly that she just hurries Jesse to complete a magic trick or whatever so that they can just wrap this whole thing up. The entire interview is just one of the most uncomfortable things that I've ever seen, and this is only number five on the list. Trust me though, if you haven't watched this full interview, you must. It is just such a terrible exchange back and forth between an actor and an interviewer. A true masterclass of what not to do in press interviews. In at number four, Billy Bob Thornton. As great as a career that old Billy Bob has had as an actor, he is also in a band called The Boxmasters. Although oddly enough, whenever he does interviews now, he insists that they only talk about the band and never ever bring up his acting career. Which is really weird considering how prolific this guy was as an actor. You'd think if the interviewer was even a little bit of a fan of his, he would be really disappointed to get this demand before starting the conversation with him. The biggest blow up by far that was viewed as one of his most awkward interviews was when he and his band were on the show called Q for CBC in Canada. The interviewer tried his best to talk to Billy, but he always answered in a very confused way, confusing and confused way, which left the band feeling awkward to answer the questions on his behalf. Uh, I wasn't instructed to, uh, I'm, in, I'm instruct, I'm not really instructed. You guys are here as a band, you're performing, uh, but I- Well, I, the producer was instructed. Right. So. But, but somewhere along the way. I mean, there that was one of the rare times that he actually spoke with the interviewer, and I actually can't believe that he just told the interviewer how he was instructed not to call his music career a hobby. Like, no wonder this guy's had five different marriages. All failed. All failed. What a rude dude. In at number three, Tony Danza. Before an interview with a local news station even began, Tony Danza was caught just slamming the local news in very colorful language. Unbeknownst to him, everything he was saying was all airing directly to live television. And then to make matters even worse, the news anchor is desperately trying to get him to just shut up for a second. And when she finally got his attention and gently reprimanded him for his words, Tony Danza didn't even bother apologizing for the unkind words that he was using regarding this woman's profession. Kim, I'm telling you, this is crazy. I don't want to do this. Tony. I'm going to be part of the local news. How exciting. Nowadays, he would probably beg to be part of any news segment or interview for that matter, considering how this one stunt really sullied his acting career. In at number two, Hugh Grant. While some English accents may sound charming, Hugh Grant's personality canceled out all of that for Jon Stewart at The Daily Show. After appearing on the show, Jon Stewart said that he was banning Grant for being a big pain in the <laughs> Stewart continued saying that he would never grant him back on the show. Pun intended. During an onstage Q&A, John remarked that they've had dictators on the show, but Hugh Grant was still his least favorite guest. Apparently, Hugh spent most of the day just complaining that he even had to be there, and even flat out said that he had better things to do. For which the staff of The Daily Show didn't really care to hear, nor did Jon Stewart. So, thanks to his high maintenance attitude, he was banned from the show with zero apologies. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Pamela Anderson. I don't know if she was wasted or what, but right from the very beginning of this interview in 2006 with the comedian John Rove McManus, it was a disaster. Upon her introduction, she came running out with more energy than that time Tom Cruise jumped on Oprah's couch. Pamela greeted the crowd with a hair flip and then proceeded to toss a handful of green candy, I think they were M&Ms, doesn't matter, grabbed the whole handful, tossed them into the crowd. Candy that was plucked from a bowl at the table of the interview. Take a look at this. the sounds of things. Although the real nail in her coffin was the drama that led up to this bizarre interview with the former Baywatch star. According to John, the show runs live and Pamela was late so he actually had to start the show before she was even in the building. When she finally did show up, she really seemed like she was doing everything to hurry up the process and just get out of there. Multiple times he genuinely asked her if she was okay, but that only made things even more awkward. And thus her career was finished, he said dramatically. With that, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled Top 10 Greatest Bruce Lee Moments. Steven Ware says, Great list, Johnny. Can't go wrong with Bruce Lee. You most definitely can't go wrong with Bruce Lee. I mean, I grew up watching his movies and just absolutely loved everything about the guy. I mean, how could you not? Appreciate your comment. 
That's me giving your comment a thumbs up. Like. Sheila Gwinnett says, I remember doing an essay on Bruce Lee back in high school. I got like 102% on it. I loved him since I was a kid. Now, Johnny, I'm just recently becoming to love BTS. I am loving you, so keep up the great work. Aw, oh, thank you so much, Sheila. That's so nice of you to say. And 102% is wild. Bruce Lee would be so proud of you for getting those extra bonus points. And much love to you, and thanks for sticking with us. Winston Miller says, I am so annoyed that Mr. Rogers has hosted this video as I would really have liked to have watched it, but as I personally find him to be a far inferior host than the masterful Lucy and the ingenious Jocelyn, I always but always press thumbs down and turn off the video. Please, please just leave it to the professionals, Mr. Rogers. Let me tell you something, Winston. Lucy herself picked me to do that video. She did that because she trusts me in putting out quality content. Both Joss and Lucy would have done a terrific job with the topic, I have no doubts. But I love Bruce Lee like no one else. So regardless, I hope you have a great day, Winston, and just know that one day I'll turn you from a hater into a fan. You just really gotta give me a chance, dude. Really sad that you gave up on Bruce Lee so quickly just because you didn't like who the host was. I'd like to think I'm a likable guy. Who cares says, ah, oh, God, I love this name, Mood. Thank you for even talking about Bruce Lee. Oh my God, I love you <laughs> even more now. Huge Bruce Lee fan. Yes, I am quite seasoned. After they aired his documentary, we knew that covering a top 10 on him would be perfect. Happy to see that we have some fellow fans in the house. Carmen Carlton says, Johnny, thank you and the rest of the crew who have kept me from going crazy in this time of the pandemic. Watching videos from this website have made life a little easier. Thank you and all of the great people that work so hard for all of us. Oh, thank you so much, Carmen. We appreciate all of you so much for leaving us lovely comments like this one. Not Winston. They truly do motivate us though to keep putting up better and better content and uh, we're happy you're here with us. And that has been the top 10 interviews that destroyed an actor's career. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to our editors for all of your hard work. If you enjoyed this video, then please show us some love here by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, don't forget to leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on today's list. And for more videos like this one, all you gotta do is tap that playlist when it pops up. From Top 10 Beyond the Screen, my name is Johnny Rogers saying until next time, stay classy. I'm talking to you, Winston. hi -ho. Now without any further delay, let's get right into today's list, the Top 10 interview. One more time openly bashes her decision. She just openly bashes her decision. Oh, I gotta do that again. I'm sorry. That's horrible. Horrible take. Seth said, Seth said, Seth Rogen said that at the time he was having a great, upon reflecting on the film, Seth Rogen said that he was having, why can't I talk? Because I'm trying to make up sentences that don't exist. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Pamela Anderson. Yeah, why did I say that so weird? Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson. 